Hey everybody, just creating my space. Thanks for coming today to your Wednesday yin yoga practice. For today's class, I recommend that you have a strap. If you don't have a strap, bring a towel. If you do have a strap, still bring some sort of a towel or something, even if you bring a t-shirt, that's what I shall be bringing because I changed Linda's clothes the other day, so I have one right here. Just a little something that you can fold up and place underneath of you to give you just the modest amount of support for some upcoming postures. If you've made it here early, think about just laying down on your mat and starting in Savasana, we will all start together in Savasana at 4.30. Thanks for coming. Hello, Fred. gavels for you all inclusiveness okay just want to make sure we're coming out here too late. It's not too late. Put on a sweatshirt. I like to be a little warm during the end. since we are trying to get a little bit deeper into those connected tissues, dressing warmly as opposed to being in a cold room can help you find a little bit more stretch. So remember today we're going to be working towards coming into a stretch that is noticeable. Um, something that you can find some stillness in, not something that is painful, just something that you are aware of. Using your breath today, really taking in the awareness, inhaling in whatever sensations you're feeling and exhaling out any expectations, any tension, anything that's just hanging out on your mind. So, oh. <laughs> yes, and that exercise from Will's class earlier. Definitely finish that. But today's class is a great compliment if you did go to Will's core and lower body class. So as you start to come on down towards your mat to start in Savasana, or if you're already there, just make sure that you have your strap nearby. And if you do find that you're having some lower back issues, I know that mine's feeling a little on the tight side right now. Go ahead and bend your knees for this Savasana. And 
It's that magical time. It's 4.30. So if you're not already down here on the floor, please come and meet me down here in the space that you created for yourself today. And bend your knees. We're all going to start together with these bent knees, finding a little bit of grounding with the soles of your feet on the floor. You can open your hips wider than hips width distance apart. What I really want you to focus on is gluing that lower back down towards the floor. So finding a little bit of engagement of that belly to glue that lower back down towards the floor. We're just going to hang out here for a couple of breaths. You can place your arms wherever feels comfortable, a little relaxed for you. And as you come into your first couple of breaths here, as you do start to relax into your practice and relax into your mat, reevaluate how your body's feeling and notice if you do have any extra tension in your upper body, if you're pressing those elbows in towards the, the floor. If you find that you keep bringing your back off of the mat, think about just gently tilting that pelvis up a little bit. Feel free to close your eyes right here. Just take this time to come into your breath. Think about why you came to class today, what it is, what it is. What is it that you're looking to get out of today's practice? Maybe you're currently feeling some pain and you're just looking to alleviate some physical pain. Maybe you're feeling some mental tension and you're just here to be guided through some movements to just help to open up your body, to help create some new connections, new experiences, to just change your mental channel, change your physical state. All right, let's go ahead and come into our first stretch of the day. Make sure that strap is nearby. I'm not gonna use it quite yet though. Keep your left foot grounded with the mat. Keep that lower back pressed down. I want you to draw your knee of your right leg in towards your chest so that your back stays down and then extend up towards the ceiling. Flex your toes back towards your face as well. Make sure that you didn't come into such a big stretch that your lower back started to come off of the mat. I'm happy to be a delightful broken record to really remind you to draw your belly in and keep that lower back glued down as much as possible. So if you need to, you can always bend this knee just a little bit. Notice if you have the temptation to roll over onto one side or another, even if the tail end of your sit bone started to curl up off of the mat, gluing that right back down again. And come back to your slow breath right here. Maybe you're even starting to practice a little bit of ujjayi breathing, a slight constriction on the back of your throat, pressing your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. All right, we're gonna use our straps now. If you don't have a strap, you can use a towel and just take that towel and loop it over your foot. If you're holding onto a towel, you can hold onto both sides of the towel. Remember, you can keep this bend in your knee as much as you need to to keep that lower back glued down towards the floor. We're just gonna hang out here back to our breath for about one minute. So keeping that lower belly drawn in is gonna help to keep that back down. We're finding a nice stretch on our hamstrings right now. And depending how tight you are is really gonna uh, influence how straight you're able to get this leg. So no pressure. Remember you're coming into a stretch that you are aware of. Maybe you can even bring that knee a little closer towards your nose if your leg is straight but not sacrificing what's that that's right your lower back on the mat 
I look for something else. Oh, yeah. All right, so if you've been holding on to your strap with both hands, you're gonna go ahead and hold on with just your right hand right now and very slowly resist the temptation to just kick it out. You're going to inch your left foot out as far as you can go while still keeping your lower back on the mat. Now once you find the place that's right for you, I still have a bend in my knee. Go ahead and press that extended leg heel into the floor. Create as much relaxation as you can in your shoulders, in your chest, keeping that rib cage knit together towards each other, that engagement of your belly for just a couple more breaths from here. Nice and slow. Just as slowly as you wiggled that foot out, I want you to gently wiggle it back in. Sorry, sorry, Matt. Yeah, all right, nice and gentle. Once it gets back there, make sure that you really glue that foot down for some grounding. Take your time as you release your strap or your towel from your right foot. You go ahead, relax, and release your right leg back down to the floor. Both feet are grounded. Just take a moment here, back to our breath, back to neutral. Great, let's go ahead and get that other side. So this time grounding your right heel down towards the floor. Knit that rib cage in tight. Keep that lower back down and send your left leg up towards the ceiling. Flex your toes back towards your face as you can. And if you found that your lower back came off of the mat, you can always start again like we did on the other side of gently drawing your knee towards your chest and then extending your leg. Just being smart for your body today, we've got just about one minute in each of the positions that we started with. So. Take attention again, what's happening with the very tip of your tailbone. Did it start to round up? Can you glue that back down? Finding that engagement once again through your belly. And once you're there, we're just bringing some attention to your upper body, relaxing your chest, releasing those shoulders and shoulder blades onto the mat. Remember each side of the body is different, so Honor whatever it is that your body can bring to today's practice. It's just practice. We're just here to feel good. To be in this moment, hopefully, and maybe even feel a little bit better afterwards. Somebody lost track of the time. It's me. All right, let's go ahead and get your strap or your towel up onto your opposite foot. Maybe bring it in for just a moment. Send it back up. You can start off holding on with two hands. Make sure that lower back glues back down, especially if you really shifted your position to get your, your strap into the scenario. Since I do have a strap, I'm gonna just gently relax and release the back of my arms back down towards the mat. Still finding that gentle pull. Just making sure I'm not losing out with my supported contact. Right, you saw it coming up next. If you want to, you can even place your right hand on your thigh to help yourself gently start to walk and wiggle one toe heel at a time. As long as you still have that lower back firmly planted. 
and you might be a lot shorter in your step or maybe a lot more flexible on this side. But you never know until you try. Back to that breath, back to that abdominal engagement, relaxing those shoulders. Awesome, go ahead, gently, slowly, wheel it all back in, plant it firmly on the floor, engage your abs, and relax and release your left foot down to meet with your right. All right, we're gonna go for just a couple of very slow bridges. If you happen to have a block nearby, which I don't anymore, you probably don't either. I want you to think about the idea of squeezing those knees in towards each other. You can even actually tuck your knees in towards each other. We're not going for a big um, glute bridge or raise. We're just gonna gently work to one vertebrae at a time. Inhale and lift ourselves up and exhale in one vertebrae at a time, slowly lower ourselves down. Let's begin, you can place your forearms and your shoulders down on the mat. Keep those feet glued, even walking those heels in a little bit closer. We're gonna inhale and gently curl up. Exhale, gently curl down. One vertebrae at a time, down to the glutes. Just two more, gently inhale up. Doing what you can remember if your lower back is hurting, I know mine's not feeling the best today. You might not be able to lift up as high as you think that you can or want to. Inhale up. So release that expectation as you exhale back down to lift the mat. Awesome. Yes. All right, next up we have some single leg figure fours. So being really kind to our body, Go ahead, keep your left, sorry, right leg planted down on the floor. Inhale your left leg up towards the ceiling and exhale, cross your left leg over your right. Start to open that thigh out, stretching your left knee down towards the end of the mat. Beautiful, we've got just about one minute right here. In the setup, just focusing on stretching that knee away from you, finding a little bit of a stretch on the outside of your leg. And guess what else we're still focusing on? Keeping that lower back glued down towards the mat. So still with that incredible focus, we're going to gently, maybe just pressing up onto your right toes. Maybe you're able to slowly lift that leg up, but I don't want you to sacrifice the lower back down. So I'm actually gonna relax and release my leg back down to the floor because I noticed that my back is starting to curl up. I'm just gonna come for this toe pointed option so I can still really focus on getting that engagement of my core to stay planted. If you were able to lift your leg up though and you want to reach your hand through or use your strap or towel that you have nearby to come a little bit deeper if that's accessible for you. And as we come here towards the end, if you want to, when you already have that leg lifted, option to straighten out your right leg up towards the ceiling. Just a couple breaths right here. Take your time moving with intention, bend that knee. Go ahead, release your right foot back down towards the floor. Find some grounding, inhale your left leg up. Exhale your left leg down towards the mat. 
glue that lower back down again and let's get the other side. Inhale your right leg up. Exhale, cross right leg over that left thigh. Find some opening. Remember, both sides of the body are different, so you might be able to do more. You might need to take it a little bit easier on yourself on this opposite side. One minute right here before we even consider lifting up that left leg. So work to find that relaxation in that upper body and find that real grounding here within your core. Big activation within the hips right now. All right, now if you're ready, go ahead and start to press up onto those left toes. And if your lower back can stay down, you can go ahead and draw your left knee in towards your chest, still stretching that right thigh away from you. If you find that big arching coming back towards your back, think about releasing your foot back down towards the floor. Gonna be smart for my body right now. And maybe this is a posture that you tried and could do easily this morning. And maybe this is a posture that in a couple hours from now you try again and you find it so easy to glue your back down towards the floor. And maybe you're like me and right now you're just taking it easier on yourself. working towards the stillness and whatever it is that you've created. If you do have that leg lifted and it feels good for you, extend your left leg up towards the ceiling. Last couple breaths here in this posture. All right, we've got a little bit longer on our backs. Release that right leg back down towards the floor. Draw your belly in. Inhale, send your left, left, sorry. Send your right leg up towards the ceiling. Exhale your left leg back down towards the floor. Take a moment, think about windshield wiping your knees, just relieving any tension that you might have on that lower back. We've got one more posture on the floor and then we'll sit ourselves up. All right. So I want you to one knee at a time, draw your knees in towards your chest. You don't have to squeeze them together super wide. This is the last time we're really gonna glue those lower backs down and focus on finding some engagement on your belly. Whichever leg feels right for you, I want you to inhale and send that leg up towards the ceiling and exhale and cross it over the other. As if you're sitting at a desk or a chair and you would cross your legs in the desk or chair. And just depending on how tight your hips are is gonna really determine how much you can cross one leg over the other. So you have two options for this uh, reclined cow face that we're doing. You can either just let gravity do the work, just find the compression that you naturally came into and keep your arms out to the side, maybe even a little bit of pressure in, of your hands palms into the floor to keep that lower back glued down. Or possibly you can reach up and grab hold of your your heels. I'm feeling so tight. I can only grab hold of one of my heels. Still recovering from this sprained ankle issue. So you know what? I'm just going to let gravity do its thing. Keep my arms out to the side. Focus on squeezing those knees together towards each other while still keeping that lower back glued down. Try not to roll over to either side. Big temptation to roll towards the side of whichever your top leg is. Think about stacking one knee on the other. And remember, shaking or trembling is normal. Being aware of the stretch you're in is what we're going for. So this might not be the most comfortable posture for you, 
I know right now this is a super challenging posture for me. So think about just closing your eyes or finding your focus on one spot, drawing that belly back in. Two more breaths right here. All right, uncross those legs. Take a moment once again, draw those knees towards your chest, stretch your elbows down towards your hips, maybe even rock gently side to side. All right, let's go ahead and get that other side. So whichever leg you had on top is gonna be on the bottom this time. Go ahead, inhale that opposite leg up, exhale, find the cross that works for you today working to squeeze your thighs gently together and stack your knees. You can either, once again, keep those arms out to the side, even pressing into your shoulders, your hands, palms, belly drawn in, lower back to the mat. We're reaching up, grabbing hold of your ankles if they're accessible to you. The more that you draw your heels towards um, your shoulders with that back down, the bigger the stretches that you're going to feel throughout your hips, throughout your hamstrings. Once again, make sure you didn't start rolling towards one side or the other. Scan your body head to toe. Find where you can relax in that upper body while still feeling that engagement of your belly and back on the floor and this deep stretch in your lower half. Just notice right now, did one side feel tighter than the other? Two more breaths right here. Awesome, go ahead and take your time, release your hands gently, uncross your legs, bring them down towards the mat. Beautiful, decide whichever side is your favorite and we're gonna gently roll over onto that side, just taking a moment in a fetal position. So feel free to place your lower arm underneath of your head, bringing your upper arm by your chest, hip stacked, knee stacked. All right, and taking your time and moving with intention and thinking about even keeping those, those abs still engaged, using your abdominals to help lift you up. We're gonna come up to a seated position. Not seated, actually. We're gonna come into, oh my gosh, the strap was following me, and I wondered what that was. I don't need any more pets. All right, we're gonna come into tabletop. We're just gonna take a moment freestyle, cat, cow, do any sorts of shimmies and shakes that feel right for your body today. Find a stretch that works for you, maybe shifting your hips a little to the left, to the right. If your back is really hurting, maybe just keeping the motions a little bit smaller. Feel free to shake that tail or shake your shoulders. All right, and then we're gonna come up into our next posture, which is going to be a big opening of those feet. We have big toe stretch. So remember, you're gonna do the best that you can with your body today, and it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing because their body is not your body. Your body is not my body, and my body is not your body, and I am just one person, and I don't know what y'all are going through, but I know I have some 
some discomfort. All right, so we're gonna start to walk those hands in and the more that we lift ourselves up as we bring our hands even towards our thighs, the more challenging that this big toe stretch is going to be. So feel free if you need to, if it's as much as you can do, to keep your hands on the floor, but do try to take that rounding out of your back if, if you can, coming into that nice kind of flat tabletop, so a nice spreading of those glutes. And if you can lift yourself, all the way up, even think about reaching for your opposite elbow. And if that was super easy peasy, maybe going for some reverse prayer or even bringing those hands palms together for prayer to do a little opening of the chest. We've got just about one minute right here. I want you to just come into stillness. Just inhaling in that awareness, whatever sensation is happening in your feet, make sure you're not overarching that back. Remember, if you do start to feel any intense pain, it's totally okay to come out of the posture and find something else that does work for you. But ask yourself, are you coming out because it's challenging and you just don't want that? Or are you coming out because you need to? And you know. last two breaths right here you've got this you're worth it keep that stomach pulled in and change go ahead bring your hands back to the mat even walk forward a little bit untuck those toes wow and go ahead tap those feet onto the floor Uh, then bring your toes together, open your knees out nice and wide, send your hips back towards your heels and we'll come into child's pose. Feel free to walk those hands, palms as far forward as honors you today. Maybe even a gentle pressing of your hands, palms into the floor to feel a little bit of activation on your shoulders. And if that doesn't feel good, think about taking that big bend in your shoulders. We've got just about one more minute right here. All right, take your time, come back up to tabletop, and from here we're just going to bring our glutes down to the floor and kick our legs out in front of us. All righty. All right, next stretch is gonna work into our, our hamstrings, our knees, and our ankles. We're gonna do two similar stretches uh, to just get to two different sorts of spaces, okay. So we're going to go for a one leg forward fold on each side and then we're gonna follow that with the seated gate latch pose. It's really good for those hips. Okay, so let's start off. I'm gonna remind you that uh, I, I sprained this ankle, so I'm just doing the best that I can and I know you are too. Here we go. So starting off in staff pose, think about even walking your glutes back just a little bit. I like to walk those glutes back just to uh, really find that as straight of a leg as possible. And finding this little bit of a forward hinge is also really awesome for anyone who's having any sort of lower back issues. So you notice that my spine is really straight and I'm not sitting here in this rounding and pulling your chest forward, even thinking of the idea of your belly coming towards your thighs. All right, so lift that chest up a little bit. Find that nice straight spine still. We're gonna go ahead and take 
the right leg. So you can lean over towards the left side. We're gonna bring that right leg directly behind us. I want you to keep your two thighs side by side so that your knees are parallel. Oh, and you should have your little towel nearby. Surprise. Uh, so you should have your thighs parallel, your knees close by. And you might even wanna put this towel under your straight leg butt cheek to have a little bit of a lift. I'm gonna have to take a little bit of a lean here because applying too much pressure on the top of my sprained ankle isn't feeling the best. But I can still come into this big lift of my chest. You just wanna make sure that your toes are pointing directly behind you as opposed to out towards the sides, which can put a lot of pressure on your knees. So just be kind to yourself. If you need to lean over towards the side, you need to put a bigger towel underneath of your straight leg butt cheek, you do it. Let's take two more chest open breaths right here. Awesome, lean over towards the left once again. We're gonna kick our right leg out in front of us. Coming back into staff pose, maybe take a moment, bob your knees, windshield wipe your legs. And then once again, if you need to, walking those glutes out behind you, finding the straightest legs that you can possibly find. I know if your lower back is really tight and you're feeling super tight that these straight legs are a challenge. You're doing your best. Okay, so now we're gonna take that left leg. I'm just gonna prep by placing my towel under my right glute cheek and bring that heel as close towards your bum as possible and then bring those thighs in together. So two knees side by side. I know, we didn't even really go for the forward fold here, but that's okay. We don't, we don't need the forward fold. We're gonna bring that fold in when we do the gate latch pose. All right, so once again, look down. Notice what's happening with your toes. They should be pointing directly behind you. You can have your hands by your side for a little bit of assistance right here. You're working to press your left glute cheek down towards the floor. The idea of getting equal pressure from both glutes down towards the floor. And I don't know about you, but I find it a lot easier to even think towards that on this side. So I'm sorry I forgot to mention it on the other. All right, go ahead and kick that left leg out in front of you. We're gonna go ahead and do something very similar. Again, this time trying not to use the towel underneath of our glutes. So we're gonna go for gate latch pose. Our thighs this time are gonna be perpendicular to each other, but you still wanna bring the top of your foot down towards the floor, the best that you can and have your toes pointing behind you or in the same direction as your knee is pointing, as opposed to finding that, that 90 degree angle duck foot. Okay, great, this is so exciting. All right, so our left leg is in front of us and our right thigh is as perpendicular to the side as we can make it. I'm getting a delightful cramp in this foot. Beautiful, we're going to inhale our left arm up towards the ceiling and exhale, reach that left hand towards the outside of your right knee and then bring your right hand fingertips behind you. Make sure that you're not rounding in your back right here. So really draw that belly in and squeeze your shoulder blades together and find a lift of your chest. And you can hang out right here, just getting a little bit of a spine twist and stimulation or you can inhale your right arm up towards the ceiling and find just a reach towards that opposite leg, or maybe you can come all the way down towards your left foot. Okay, but if you grabbed hold of that left foot, don't have your chest towards the floor, pull on your foot to help bring your chest forward so that you're opening up towards the ceiling. And if that's super hard for you, just lift that hand maybe pressing your left elbow in towards your thigh to find that openness of your chest. Big stretch through the sides of the body. Let's take two more breaths right here.
come out one step at a time. So we're gonna inhale and we're gonna stretch our right hand up towards the ceiling, lift ourselves up. Then let's inhale once more. Let's bring both arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, release your hands down towards the floor. Lean towards the left side. And kick your left leg forward. Yay! All right, maybe bob it out for just a second. Come back into that staff pose. Starting again from right here in staff pose. We're going to this time lean towards the right side and bring our left leg behind us and find that perpendicular angle. So your knees are making that 90 degree angle and resist the urge to turn and place the inside of your foot on the floor. You're working to get your heel as close towards your glute as possible and top of the foot down on the floor. So starting off facing towards your right leg, you're gonna inhale your right arm up towards the ceiling and then exhale, turn towards that left knee. Your, yeah. Mm -hmm. Your left hand fingertips can come behind you. So notice if you've got this rounding in your back right now, I want you to inhale and pull that chest forward. Shoulder blades come down and back and it's actually gonna help you twist towards that left thigh a little bit more. Feel free to take a bend of this left elbow, which is also going to help with the twist. And once again, think about finding a little bit of grounding of both of your glutes towards the floor. Now remember, you can stay right here and just enjoy this twist. But if you want to feel a little bit more, if you want to bring it into the side of the body, inhale your left arm up towards the ceiling. Start pulling gently on your left thigh. And then exhale towards your right toes. So as you first come into this, it's pretty normal for your chest to have collapsed a little bit. Pulling on that leg will help you to find some rounding. I find that reaching all the way out is a little bit too much of a stretch for me, so I'm just going to use my right elbow to press into my thigh to help me rotate my chest towards the opposite wall. And let's take a couple breaths right here. Still work to find some length, even pressing your extended leg heel into the floor, finding some activation in that hamstring right now, making sure that you're not just pressing through the kneecap down towards the floor as well. Nice work. Inhale gently and lift yourself up. Exhale, release your right hand fingertips down towards the floor. Yeah, things got a little weird that time. All right, let's inhale both arms up towards the ceiling. Turn towards our left leg. Exhale, both hands down. Lean over towards the right side. Kick your left leg forward. Oh my gosh, left, right, right, left. You saw we were going. We were getting out of the posture. All right, we're just going to take a moment with our hands behind us to open our chest just a little bit. So have your fingertips pointing towards your glutes. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, look up, and if it feels good for you, you can even press up into your heels and bring the soles of your feet down to the floor. It doesn't feel good for me, so I'm just gonna find this little bit of an opening of a chest supported with my hands and my glutes on the floor and change. Awesome. We've got one more big stretch. So I want you to fold both legs in and we're going to come back up to kneeling. And for this one, you're going to open your feet a little bit wider, but you're going to work to keep your knees together. We're as close as they can be. So once again, the tops of the feet are pressing down towards the floor and we're going to exhale and start to sit ourselves back and you're working to get your glutes between your heels. So this is called hero pose. It's not quite soup div and dress. Now we're not gonna go all the way back like you might in a Bikram practice, but you might find that you just kinda wanna use your fingers to help you shift that calf muscle meet towards the side. And this is a big opener on those ankles. So if you're feeling really tight, you might not be able to sit all the way back. And I'm definitely finding that that is me today. So feel free to use those hands on the floor. If not, perhaps you can come all the way up and even sit in um, prayer. I cannot. Let's just hang out here for a couple more breaths.
So the more that you bring your heels towards your the mat, hips touching heels, heels touching hips, everything grounded on the floor, the more that you're really opening up your ankles. We're also cutting off the blood flow uh, in towards our knees and our ankles right now, which is so good uh, as we will come out in a moment to restore blood flow, just to really keep some circulation going, helping to break down scar tissue and whatnot. Take one more deep inhale. Exhale, gently walk those hands forward. We're gonna go ahead and shift back onto our glutes. Go ahead, bring those legs in front of you. Take a moment here, kneeling, not kneeling, oh my gosh, with your knees bent. We're gonna bring the soles of our feet together, allow those knees to come out nice and wide, and take your time to lower yourself down onto your back, taking a moment right here in a nice counter pose of recline bound angle. If you find that it's really hard for you to get those knees to touch down towards the floor, you can either walk your heels a little bit further away from you, which is also a great option if you're feeling any discomfort in your lower back, or think about placing a prop under the backs of your thighs. Coming to the end of our practice here today, you guys, we'll spend one minute right here in our recline bound angle. So I know that this was a little bit more of a, of a yangy, yangy yin class. Maybe a little less focus on the extreme stillness because we moved through a couple different variations of the same posture, especially in the beginning with those big hamstring stretches and hip openers. All right, so it's time for our final savasana, taking our last three minutes together in final savasana. I encourage you, especially if you are feeling any discomfort in that lower back, uh, to use a prop right now if you've got something nearby that you can place behind the backs of your knees to just find that uh, supported tenting that we started class off with, but you know, actually relaxing yourself down towards the mat a little bit more. So if you don't have something, a prop that you can place underneath of your knees while still you knew it was coming, finding the support of your lower back on the floor. And feel free to tent those knees or feel free to come into a, a natural savasana. Ugh. Just honoring what feels good for your body today. So remember, Savasana right here is still part of the practice and the purpose is stillness. So remember, just, just two postures ago, we worked on cutting off the circulation to our knees and to our ankles. And just notice right now while you're being really still, can you feel your blood circulating? Can you feel your heartbeat or pulse? What do you notice when you take the time to tune into yourself and into your stillness and just being as aware of your body and your mind as possible? So this isn't the time to let your to-do list creep in. This is the time to let your thank you, thank you to you list. I just made that up, creep in, just thanking yourself for coming here today and making this time and giving some attention to yourself and your, your body and your practice, both physically and mentally.
awesome, awesome work today, everyone. If it feels right for you to stay down here in the Savasana, please do. If you'd like to close out our practice together, take your time. Let's once again roll over onto our side. Let's roll to the opposite side this time to come into a fetal position. Take a couple of breaths right here. Feel free to keep those eyes closed. Continue to move slow and with your intention as you gently press yourself back up. And come into a seated position that feels good for you. As you get here, bring your hands palms to the center of your chest, tuck your chin to your chest, bow to yourself, and really honor yourself. Thank yourself for coming to today's practice. If you have any questions or concerns about whatever we did today, you know you can reach out. Keep thinking those good thoughts, eating good food, <laughs> eating good foods, speaking good words, doing good deeds, you know, keeping it weird, finding the funny wherever you can. I'm so glad you guys came today for your practice. It was my pleasure sharing some energy with you. I really appreciate you sharing some with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.